Next comes the downstream analysis to determine what sequences of DNA got pulled down. This is done with qPCR, chip-on-chip, or chip-seq. I've already showed some examples of qPCR data. Keep in mind that when you use qPCR, you need to have target loci in mind, and you need to design primers for the amplification. Chip-on-chip -chip and chip-seq allow you to perform chip on a genome-wide scale. In chip-on-chip, -chip, the chip procedure is carried out as it normally would be until after the DNA is purified. At this point, the immunoprecipitated DNA is amplified and labeled fluorescently. The input DNA is also amplified and labeled with a complementary fluorescent probe, and both sets of labeled DNA are combined and hybridized to microarrays corresponding to specific domains, loci of interest, or the whole genome. The ratio of signal from the fluorescent labels of the chip DNA and control DNA allows enriched regions to be identified. There are some limitations of chip-on-chip, -chip, though as technology advances, these are becoming less of an issue. The first is that a large number of cells are required for chip-on-chip -chip experiments. Chip-on-chip -chip is also not sensitive to all of the repetitive elements in the human genome. A large number of arrays are necessary to cover the entire genome. And finally, chip-on-chip -chip could be susceptible to amplification bias after the DNA amplification. More commonly, ChIP-seq is used to analyze protein DNA binding interactions on a genome-wide scale. In ChIP-seq, the pull-down DNA sequences are purified and amplified, followed by high-throughput sequencing of the fragments. These sequenced fragments then get mapped and aligned to the genome. And if there are many sequenced fragments that overlap at a specific spot, they form a peak. These peaks indicate that this sequence was bound to the protein that got pulled down by the antibody. Here's an example of what the peaks look like in these sequencing tracks from a publication that was looking at histone modifications genome-wide. Here they're showing results from a region with two active genes, STAT1 and STAT4, and results from a region containing an inactive gene, MYO1b. You can see that activating histone marks, such as H3K4 methylation at the top left, are present at the active genes, especially at the gene promoters, but are absent from the repressed gene. Similarly, if you look at marks of repression, such as H3K27 and H3K9 di and trimethylation, you can see that these modifications are found along the inactive MYO1b gene. To show how powerful CHIP is, I'd like to show this figure from the same publication. Here the authors created a high-resolution map of histone modifications on a genome-wide scale. They correlated histone modifications and several other proteins, such as RNA polymerase II, in around 13,000 genes in resting human CD4-positive T cells whose expression levels are known. They separated the genes into groups based on their expression levels, either high, medium, low, or silent genes, as indicated by the different colors, and align them relative to the transcription start sites. We can see the binding of RNA polymerase II right at the transcription start site of the active genes, and if we look at the histone modifications, we can see a nucleosome depleted region right at the transcription start site where no histones are bound, with the marks of activation, H3K4 methylation, present around the start site in active genes, and the mark of repression H3K27 trimethyl present at the silent genes. All of this chip data has allowed us to see exactly which and where histone modifications are present along an entire active gene, as well as an inactive genes, which I'm not showing here. When transcription is happening, histone modifiers introduce activating histone modifications as the polymerase travels along the DNA. The promoter region has a very well-defined chromatin signature, there's a clear nucleosome-depleted region where the polymerase binds, and large increases in activating H3K4 methylation and acetylation. As transcription continues along the gene, modifiers introduce new modifications to allow the polymerase to move along the DNA. I hope these few examples show how powerful and useful CHIP can be.